Hello everybody, it's Riggy Rob here, and today I am playing Softbody. And this is an independent game made by Zeke Virant, as you can probably see. And at its core, it is an action video game, as you so helpfully put, but it's probably better described as a puzzle bullet hell. And I'm just going to sort of dive into the tutorial. I've had a little play around with this already, but I haven't really delved too much deeper into this. So we have our yellow soft body here, and this helps us sort of paint the world as we move along these squares. And it's really nice to see people exercising their creativity in these types of games. So, merge with your ghost body to push the ball. So the ghost body is this red snake over here, which I'm not controlling, but I can merge together and we can push the ball along and complete the level. So yeah, it's nice to see people sort of indulging their creative side to these sort of games. You don't really see people try and exercise that right so much anymore. Or even if they did at all. I know technology has progressed quite a bit nowadays, so things are more sort of capable to handle these types of games. But at the same time, there sort of seems to be a trend of people must make cinematic, gritty, realistic games. But it's sort of it's nice to have a game sort of like this. It's sort of relaxed, it's chilled out, and it's very interesting, not only to play but to watch as well. Or at least I hope so for you guys. So as you can probably tell, we're getting into the bullet hell part of the game. Where we've got these little turrets firing at us. And we have to avoid being hit with them by our soft body. Not necessarily our ghost body. But our ghost body is what can pop the turrets and destroy them so they can complete the level. So, at the time being, we're just using the soft body and the ghost body connected together. Sort of having to avoid this central turret as we push along the ball. And later on, you'll see that we're, we're able to sort of control the ghost body separately, independently to the soft body. So yeah, let's complete this. Nice, we're done. And we'll try and get this little turret over here, avoid that. Yeah, we go. So that's sort of the central, unique selling point of this game, is that you have two separate bodies and you can control them independently of one another. So here we can see we can detach the ghost body by moving the right stick. So that's what I'm doing with the right stick right now. And yeah, the central difficulty of this game comes from having to control these two independent bodies at the same time. So you sort of have to split your attention between the two of them. So we use the ghost body to pop the turrets. If the ghost body gets hit by a projectile, it just merges back into the soft body. Which is an interesting concept, sort of like, in this game you have a one hit death, as bullet hells often are, where you get an opportunity to live again if you're using the ghost body rather than the soft body. And we're also introduced to this, holding R2 to move slower. So it can be quite, ah, I even died in the tutorial. Try again, the world is yours. It's quite easy to sort of move around very quickly and end up hitting a projectile that you didn't mean to at the time. So having this R2 to slow down function is very handy. Gives you a lot more control over where you're going. So I believe this might be the proper first proper level out of the tutorial. It's very similar to the very first level in chapter one. So let's push this along. There we go. Oh, there we go. Completed the level. Alright. So, chapter one. Let's paint this square. Let's try and find our ghost body, wherever it may be. There we are. Okay, let's push you along. And around. And around again. And into the goal. There we go. So there is sort of a time attack feature. Slow tide. There is a time attack feature for this, obviously being a puzzle game, that's sort of like a central replay value for this. Let's destroy you, and we'll slow down, cover these, and then head back to the turret. So you must paint the entire world by moving your soft body closer to squares before you can complete the level, which is moving the ball around with your ghost body. And it's quite interesting that you can sort of do this at the same time if you wished. It's sort of 
very mind-bending to do it that way, but it's possible. So this is the level fader. Let's cover these squares. So can, now we can use these squares as sort of a shield to cover ourselves. And if I so wanted to, I'll just move the ghost body along. Don't need to bother. Nothing to worry about from these turrets because they don't do anything to the soft body. Okay, let's merge them together again. So already this is getting very complex. And it's, it's, it's nice to see that something like this can actually be realized because most people probably wouldn't even have the idea of doing something like this. And I'm very glad that Zeke actually has sort of implemented his idea in a way that's sort of satisfying to play. Aim. Okay, so we're getting these arrows to shoot us. We're safe for the time being, but now we're free. We've got to watch out for those projectiles as they can speed up very quickly. Let's push you along here. Let's avoid that. Yep, don't want to get caught out. Alright, level finished. Ta-da! Circle blocks. Okay. I wonder what circle blocks is referring to. Oh, god damn it. Yes, try again. I wonder what circle blocks is referring to. Whether it's the squares that you have to travel around in a circle to complete, or whether it's the actual... I don't know, the blocks that are shooting us. Okay, let's push you along. I'm just wondering, is there even a safe place to stay? Just sort of game it out a little bit. There we go. How about that? Ah, uh, so there is... You have to keep paying attention to move the ghost body around, but as long as the soft body's safe, you should be you should be fine to complete the level. Tower. Okay. Oh, God. Very close to projectiles over there. Let's try and avoid those. Slow it down. There we go. Parallels. Alrighty. Let's merge the ghost body together and we'll stay on the safe side for the time being. Ah, no. There is a containment field. Okay. Ooh. So this is getting very hectic. But I, I like games that have a challenge like this. Whew. So yeah, this is an interesting game. I think it's available on PC as well as PS4 and, and if if I'm not mistaken, there should be a Vita port coming out if it's not already out now. Um, but yeah, you can play this on PC, which I find very strange because this type of game sort of requires a controller. And this is nothingness, okay. So how do we break out of here? The ghost body can get those. So now we're sort of getting into it that you have to avoid the turret in the middle and uh, into the right hand side while controlling the the ghost body on the other side. So I'm just sort of doing circuits around it because that's what I can wrap my head around. Glide around the room. Okay. So, okay. So those are, that's just a constant stream. So there's no way to avoid those projectiles over there. So we're just going to have to try and make circuits around this central turret. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. There we go. So you can sort of push the ball along with the ghost body without actually having to sort of continue in that direction. The momentum will push it along. So like this here. Just sort of staying towards one side of it if possible. Push it along. Push it along. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Easy decisions. I highly doubt there's any easy decisions in this game. Ooh, okay. Let's cover those. And I like the soundtracks, it's sort of like simple ambience. Ooh. So there was a central turret moving as the ball moves along, but there was also a turret that was created trying to fire at us. There we go. One more. That should do. Alright. And we'll push this ball along. Ooh, okay, slow down. There we go. So yeah, this is... It's an interesting game. It's sort of 
the feedback of moving your soft body around is very interesting. It's very satisfying and yeah, it's kind of hard to come across. Ah, oh, damn it. It's kind of hard to come across just by watching this. You sort of have to get a feel for this to sort of understand how it feels. Ah, okay, this is, this is a little bit difficult. These slow moving projectiles are getting me. And I'm also getting hit by the the black holes completely taking me out. Okay. So they're sort of bouncing around the room and every time they bounce, they create a projectile. Ah! I will get the hang of this, don't you worry. Okay, so let's get this. This side, slow it down. Okay, avoid those. All right, we've got it open. Merge together. And now we're gonna take it very steadily. Don't want to get caught out by those black holes. Or the sm slow moving projectiles either, because those are... Ooh, there we go. All right, completed level. Nice. Ping Ding, wow, what a name. Okay, so I guess we want to sort of break out the big black hole as early as possible. Otherwise it's going to just sort of create much more a much more difficult situation. Ah, was there a projectile hiding in the, under the ball? Okay, let's go. Let's break you out. Move you along. And I really enjoy the aesthetic of this. You don't often see neon games all that often. I mean, we've played Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which does have that aesthetic. And I wish more games had it. It's just sort of like really eye-catching and visually interesting. And I might as well mention, just talking about it, there is a s sort of style of cork with this. So spin. Um, the idea is, is that one person can control one stick while the other controls the other. So you sort of share the controller between you. And I can imagine that's sort of interesting to play as, but because the central difficulty of this game is from the fact that you have to control two independent bodies at the same time, I can understand why Zeke has recommended that you play the game, if you're planning to do that, on the hard body game mode. So let's try it, slow it down. We want to shield ourselves from these projectiles. Okay, let's back it up and go forward. All right. Okay. Completed level. All right. So there wasn't a ghost body in that level. Turtles. Okay. Ah. So I need the ghost body to destroy these turrets. There we go. Ooh, let's avoid that. Back it up. There we go. Ooh. So yeah, I'm very glad that there is this slow down button to increase your maneuverability because I imagine it would get extremely difficult trying to do this without the slow slow down button. Well, that could be like a self-imposed challenge. See if you can actually get through the level without slowing down whatsoever. And because this, ooh, God, just about avoided that. Ah, nope, didn't avoid that one. Because this game does have sort of timers to track how quickly you completed the level, that could be like a self-imposed challenge as a time trial. You don't want to slow down at all if you're trying to get a high score. God damn it, this get it's getting me every time. Okay. Let's take it slow. I'm gonna get you first. Okay. Ah. Even going for that side first still got me. Okay. All right, slow it down, slow it down. Let's not panic. Let's take it easy. Push the ball along a little. Get the turret, there we go. So yeah, it's getting very hectic right now. So this is where it's a bullet hell descriptor comes from. Because honestly, it's a bullet hell. There's no other way to sort of refer to it. It is just straight up a bullet hell. It's a puzzle game, but it's a bullet hell. All right, congratulations. Big two snakes, okay. Well, I think we're zoomed out actually, so it's not us being big, but the rest of the level being smaller. Oh God. So I think that might have been a homing projectile that time. 
which got us. Okay, so avoid those, yep. So yeah, you can see sort of the tracking paths of the projectiles that are following us. Ooh. Ah. Avoiding the high moving one went straight into the other one. Okay. Let's move you around and get you. Ah. Come on, we can do this. I'm going to get these turrets. Ah, uh, was it just about to fire projectiles? I think it might have been. Okay. So, let's merge these together. Ooh, damn it. Merge them together. And let's get you, deal with you first. There we go, alright. Got rid of the homing projectiles, that's good. And this turret is fine for now because as long as you keep moving, you're not yet, you're not at risk of sort of dying to it. Ooh, got you. Let's avoid you. Slow down. There we go. All right. Let's get this center left one. So yeah, if, as long as you keep moving in these ones, you're fine. As long as you don't sort of head back on yourself either, you should be okay. Let's paint this last one. One over here too. Alrighty, ooh. So, okay. So we've just had a change of sort of background and this is getting really weird. Okay. Hello. We've got snakes following us. Do we sort of, oh. How do we destroy these? Okay, let me see. Is it the fact that you destroy the red dot? Yeah, there we go. So we've got our sort of antagonists, almost, opposing soft bodies to us. It's almost like a boss battle, actually. Almost, almost. Do we get him? Island and Ain. Okay. Oh, I'm getting a nice zoom in. Oh, hello. Whoa. Okay, so this is very different to what we've just seen. I'm sort of making loops because it seems the most natural thing to do, but yeah, where is this leading? So it's just oh, sort of opening up a little bit. I wonder if this is sort of like a metaphor for something. It seems sort of, I'm not sure, like a sperm and an egg traveling around in a a womb, almost. And this just seems to be like a free-flowing, creative, fun session to draw whatever you want. So why don't we try something a little bit silly? Let's see. Yeah! So that's an R. Let's get an I. It's almost an I. Oh, the R is disappearing! No! Okay. Maybe we have to colour these circles in. Make it to the edge of the circle. There we go. So, slowing down. It's getting very slow. Come on, we can make it to the edge. Alright. Ah, oh, that's nice and beautiful. Okay, so where is this going? Fade to black. 